All right, welcome back. Um, we are going to go over um, 6.4, which is called More Ferris Wheels, and it's called Solidifying Understanding. Whenever it says Solidifying Understanding, know that they've talked about something before and they developed some of that understanding, and now we're going to kind of put it into practice. So you'll see us move a little bit away from um, the word problem of Carlos on the Ferris wheel, and now we're moving more towards like the generality of... Um, the function assigned. So today you'll be able to graph sine functions of the form h of t equals a sine b of t, b of t, b t plus d. And I asked you before we started recording, I said, hey, is there any part of this that looks any kind of familiar? So um, I will say the person who is brand new to this will say none of this looks familiar. But the person who is used to looking at, at patterns here will be like, oh my gosh, that kind of looks familiar, right? That kind of looks familiar. Okay, so number one, you should recognize sign in there. That's not the thing that looks familiar because we've never graphed sign. But can you tell me that someone said plus D looks familiar? Plus D looks familiar. What did, like whenever I had a function, say like X squared or log of X, right? What did that plus D do to your function? What did that plus D do to your function? Yeah, it shifted the whole thing up or it shifted the whole thing down, depending on if D was positive or negative. Very good. Is there anything else in here that reminds you of anything? Is there anything else that reminds you of anything else? Yeah, so the BT, B times T in the sign, um, we've kind of worked with it, but it didn't look like that. The A sign to me kind of reminds me of like if I had, if I was comparing X squared to like 5X squared, what does that 5 do to your function? What does that 5 do to your function? I need to move this. So if you don't know, we're going to graph it. That's the advantage of having our calculator here, right? So here's x squared, right? Here's 5. Anyone want to say it before I write it? Yes, very good. Someone said it's a vertical stretch. Very good. So imagine this guy is a rubber band and I'm stretching him taller, right? Like Elasta Woman, maybe. Is that what? No, Elastic Girl. Is that what her name was? Whatever. So you're stretching her... And as you stretch her, it looks like she's getting skinnier, but in reality, my mind thinks that she's just getting taller, right? So that's what this coefficient five does. That five makes the function, I don't know, in two, two ways. It'll make it look skinnier or it'll make it look taller, depending on how you like view it. Okay, so put that away for just a second. And then it says, how can I represent the vertical motion of a rider on a Ferris wheel graphically? And how does changing speed, height, radius of the Ferris wheel affect the graph of the function of the equation? So your job today is this. This is your only job. What does A do to my function? What does B do to my function? And what does D do to my function? You already know what D does. So we're like a third of the way there. So A, you kind of, we kind of just talked about it. And will it look funny? Maybe, maybe not. And what does B do to my function? So this is, we've dealt with like the multiplier of X or in this case T before, but I want to really make sure that everybody's like clear and understanding it. So again, your job is to figure out what A, B, and D do. Because again, during a test, classic question is going to be, um, here's some crazy function. How would you describe it? What are its important features? So that's going to be that's going to be talked about here. All right, so let's continue. It says previously you calculated the height of a rider on a Ferris wheel at different times t, where t represents the elapsed time after the rider passed the position farthest on the right from the Ferris wheel. Remember we called him a, but now we know he's his name is 0, right? So recall the facts for the Ferris wheel. The Ferris wheel has a radius of 25 feet. Okay? The center of the Ferris wheel is 30 feet above the ground. 
the wheel makes one complete revolution counterclockwise every 20 seconds. Okay. So those are things that we already know. So you are, um, you also previously found several data points for the height of the writer at different times, right? You guys filled out that chart. You looked for the commonalities of every single time that you calculated it. And then you came up with a ge generic equation. Because of the symmetry of the positions on the wheel, you realize you didn't need to calculate all of the heights, just a few were enough because there were a couple points that you calculated, for example, two seconds, he's at 45 feet, six seconds, again, um, he's now at 54 feet. So based on the information you previously found, as well as any additional insights you might have um, about writing on the Ferris wheel, sketch a graph of the vertical height of a writer on... Um, on the Ferris wheel. Oh, sorry, there's an echo. So on the Ferris wheel. Okay, so um, at six seconds, the writer is at a vertical height of 54 feet. Based on that information, um, what can you, can you sketch the graph? Okay, so some of you are going to hop back over and it's a, like you should you should probably hop back over to that that table that you guys all drew. Um, uh, let's see, this is 20 seconds. So where is that table? Is it in two or, mm, I wanna say it's in two. Is it in two guys? Someone help me. It's not in two. Yes, it is, it's in two. So I didn't fill it all out because this was your task. So go ahead and um, pull from your table in, here so you guys should have all this information and then you are going to build a graph okay so you're going to flip back and forth between here and um, 6.4 you're going to build a table and then you're going to graph this okay so i'm going to help you out just a little bit across the bottom you're going to have seconds and then over here you're going to have height Okay, and what will that look like? So notice here, let's just talk about a couple of things. Notice here, we start at zero seconds and they want you to graph until about 40 seconds. In that time, what has Carlos done in 40 seconds? In that time, what has Carlos done in 40 seconds? What does he do? Like, can, like ignore the graph right now. Imagine him on the Ferris wheel. Exactly. He went around twice. So whatever the picture looks like, can you imagine this for a second? Do you really have to go through and painstakingly graph all of these numbers? The answer is no, right? I only have to graph one and then copy it. Does that make sense? I only have to graph one and then now I'm gonna copy it. So if you didn't know that, not a big deal, now you do, okay? So I'm gonna pause the video really quick. Okay, so I'm gonna make an assumption that you guys have those points. Oh no, don't go away. Um, so I'm going to pull my points off of whatever you guys tell me. Hopefully you guys tell me they're an answer. Um, I'm pulling them off the chart that I just showed you. So I'm just, um, and then I'm going to graph them on, I'm going to graph them on Desmos because why not? Um, so let me go back to Desmos and I'm going to graph this. Um, maybe I will, you know what? Let me just go like this. Nope. Let me just go like this. And this, okay. So I'm gonna um, graph using a table because tables are easier to write as points. So um, I know the the numbers were like one. Can I type on this thing? Hold on, let me try to type because Miss Johnson types faster than she can with this keyboard. So one, oh, it's not gonna work. One, oh, you're not gonna work. My keyboard, my keyboard is being lazy. All right. One, enter, 
two, enter, three, enter, six, enter, 7.5, enter, eight, enter. I'm pulling it, I'm pulling the seconds off of there and I'm expecting that you guys are gonna fuel me with the whys because then I don't have to look up each one. Um, 23, 28, 36, 28, 36, 37, and 40. All right. Give me some numbers. At one second, I know I figured this one out, but at one second, what was it? You guys have that? Yeah. Um, I think we got, so I'm just going to, I'm going to plug in my equation because that was way easier. I don't know if I've ever showed you this before. So I'm going to backspace this guy and I'm going to use that equation that we all came up with. Do you guys remember this? It was 30. Do you guys remember this equation? Yes. Plus. Do you guys remember this equation? Yeah, it was 30 because it was 30 off, 30 feet off the ground the center is, right? 25 because that was your radius of your, what is it called? Your Ferris wheel. Um, which function would we use? Sine, very good. So I'm going to click function right here. You guys all see where I clicked function and then I'm going to hit sign. And then it says, and then we did 18T. Do you guys remember 18T? If you don't remember why 18T, it was mostly because of 18 seconds, no, 18 degrees per second. That's what we figured out. So I'm going to write X, except for, does everybody see that little hazard symbol that it says? It's, it's basically saying like, what are you talking about? Who is X? So if you look at the column to the left, it says X sub one. So I just need to put a one there and then he's totally happy. These are not my numbers. What did I do wrong, guys? 18, 30. Oh, I know what I did wrong. I know what I did wrong. Yeah, you guys figured it out. All right. I did it wrong because it was supposed to be degrees. And then boom, there's all my answers. Everybody see all my answers? Um, I'm just going to make sure that all my answers work on my piece of paper. 37, 44, 50, 53, 47, 44, 5, 15. 5. Yeah, these are all right. Good. Perfect. Okay. So I'm going to hide this guy and you're like, Hey, Ms. Johnson, there are no points graphed on here. Um, if you are wondering why it's because it's outside of this window. So I'm going to drag this down and pinch a little. I would like to say the word dilate. I would like to dilate a little. And this thing looks like a mess. Do you guys all see my mess here? Does everybody see my little mess here? Yes, everyone sees my mess. Okay, good. So I'm going to add a couple more points into here because it looks like a mess. Okay. Um, what numbers would you add to this to give you more clarity? What number would you like to see? What? How many seconds would you like to see? How many seconds would you like to see? Yeah, I'd like to see 22. I agree. Not 22. 20 also. My bad. So 20. Uh, is that where you thought 20 would be? Is that where you guys thought 20 would be? Yeah, right? Right. Okay, good. What other numbers would you want me to plug in? What other numbers would you like me to plug in? Okay, so you guys are basically choosing the numbers in between, right? So yeah, I'd like to know 10 because there's a big empty space between here. So I'd like to know what happens at 10 and 11. So I'm just going to hit those. I'm going to say enter. Oops, not that. I hit the wrong number. So here I want to do 10. Here I want to do 11. Is that giving you a better picture of what's happening there? Everyone see what's kind of happening there? Yeah. And then I'm going to also do 17, someone said, would be a pretty good one. So do you guys kind of see what's happening? Yes. So if you had to sketch this, if you had to sketch this, 
what would it look like? Show me like on the screen, wiggle your fingers. Oh, very good. Someone says at, at every 10, it goes to 30. Think about why that is so true. At every 10, it goes to 30. Now think about your Ferris wheel and think about why that has to be true. That is such a good observation. At zero, someone said, yes, I want to find out zero. I'll put zero in. Very good. Doesn't it make sense that every single 10, it goes to zero? Think about your Ferris wheel, right? So Carlos goes to A, and then I forgot the point across from A, and he's there again halfway through. Halfway through what, Ms. Johnson? Halfway through the whole cycle of 20 seconds, right? And then he goes again, he's there again. So halfway through, he's constantly hitting that, um, where the center of the Ferris wheel is. Very good. So someone, it wasn't a question, someone made an observation. They said, Ms. Johnson, at every 10, so at 0, 10, 20, 30, 40, if you notice, it's always at 10. Does everybody see that? Okay. So then I'm going to plug in 30 as well and see if that's true. And it is, right? So if, if you can, can you draw this thing the best that you know how to? Can you just draw this thing the best that you know how to? Um, if I was to draw it, it would look like a mess. Oh, wait. Oh, no, I meant 30 plus side. Wait. Because it would be zero degrees every rotation, and then it would just be the center of the ground. Exactly. So someone says, hey, Ms. Johnson, the reason why it goes 10 at, at every single 10, Carlos will be 30 feet above the ground is because that's when he's like either the furthest right on the Ferris wheel or the furthest left. Does that make sense? Very good. And so the furthest right is called zero degrees and the furthest left would be called 180 degrees. And that's really good. How do, wait, how do I get the one to go on the bottom for this X one up here? For this up here where I wrote, um, X1. Yeah. So when you're up here, it automatically will designate it. So I literally typed X and then one, and then the one pushes down automatically. It doesn't do that. If you're not in a table like this, there's a different way to do it. Um, one of your classmates actually figured this out. It's shift minus, or if you want, it's down here too in the, do you see, um, right next to the one, two, three button on the bottom left? right here, bottom left. That's where it is. Good job. All right. So if I had to draw this thing in, it would look something like that, right? So I'm going to pull up my OneNote. I'm going to split my screen for right now just to get this in there. But I want to graph this like this. Put this away for a second. Do you guys kind of see it? Do you kind of see it? What does it look like? Can you make your, can you draw it in the air so I can see what you're thinking? Draw it in the air for those of you. Yeah. Yes, Luis. That's right. I agree with that. Kind of looks like this. Look at Miss Johnson, right? It looks like this. Right? Right? Okay. So Miss Johnson is going to try to graph this. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to put those, um, what are they called? Anchor points. I'm going to put anchor points at the tens where um, one of you guys came up with that. So I'm going to go with this. I'm going to go 30, 30, 30, 30, 30. Okay. Okay. The next thing I want to look at is when is he at his lowest? When is he at the lowest or the highest? I'll go with lowest or highest. When is he at the lowest or the highest? When is he at the lowest or the highest? According to this, the numbers that we chose here, sorry. Um, there you go. According to this, the, the highest looks like it's at six. Okay, makes sense with me. Makes sense with me really quick. 
if he's at the middle at 0, 10, 20, 30, 40, when would he be at the highest point? And remember, he's moving at the same speed, right? Make sense of this. When do you think he would be at the highest? At how many seconds? Just guess. It is totally okay if you are wrong, but I think you guys can figure this out. When would he be at the highest? At how many seconds? Okay, I got one person saying six or eight, but eight is 44, right? And six is 53. There's a better way for you to figure this out. So ignore, everyone ignore Desmos. Just ignore Desmos. Look on the screen to the right. Look at my graph to the right. Yeah. Yes. So someone said, well, he's going to be at the highest at 90 degrees and 270 degrees. Exactly. That is exactly true. So in case you forgot, let me just draw you a picture. We talked about, again, bad circle. I apologize. If this is my Ferris wheel, this guy is zero degrees. This guy is 180, right? This up here is 90 degrees and this down here is 270 degrees. Does everybody agree with your classmate that said, oh, he's going to be at the highest at 90 degrees and he's going to be at the lowest at 270 degrees. Does everybody agree with that? Good. Now tell me about, now talk to me in seconds. So now go back over here, right? Because zero is at zero seconds. 10 is at 180 degrees, right? So I'll write that in a different color. Maybe that'll make more sense. So here, this is at zero seconds. And over here, this is when he's at 10 seconds, right? So how many seconds do, yes, exactly. How many seconds does it make sense for him to be at the top? Someone said five. Does that make sense? Why does five make sense? Like someone type in the chat, why would five literally make sense in this case? I need to make this go away so you guys can see more of the graph. Yeah, it's the halfway point between zero and 10. Perfect. Very, very strong work there. Okay. So take a couple seconds, like breathe that in, make sure that that makes absolute sense to you. Why it makes sense to have five be the highest. No, wait, wait, wait. How high is he when he's at five seconds? Like what's the tippy top? Like how tall is he? How tall is he? So if you need to go back to your brain of what the Ferris wheel actually looks like, looks like this-ish, right? You know all those measurements. Exactly. It's going to be 30 plus 25, which is our middle point. I mean, it, which is the, the height of the center plus our radius, right? The height of the center plus our radius. Very good. Very good. Very good. Okay. So then now I can make at five seconds, he's at 55. So let me try to get 55 here. Um, maybe, he, no, that's not right. That looks good. Where else is he at 55? Where else is he at 55? How many seconds? How many seconds? When else? When? That's a good question. When else is he at 55 feet above ground? Someone said 25 seconds. Is that right? Yeah. Does that make sense? So for those of you who put some time in and are understanding this Ferris wheel thing, it makes sense to me because like, look, I'm going to get rid of my Desmos right now. So like, so this is just keep going with your halves, right? So you guys all said, Miss Johnson, the reason why I know he's at the highest is because it's half. It's halfway between zero and 10, right? So that means you can tell me when I'm at the bottom. That means you can tell me when I'm at the bottom. When am I at the bottom? So don't put it in the chat. Just wait, 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 wait. I need everybody thinking about this. When would I be at the bottom of, when would I be there? Ooh, someone says this. Hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah, that actually makes complete sense. So I've got one person in the chat with the correct answer. I agree with you. 
So I need how many seconds, where do you think, when would I be at the bottom? So look at this, this is at zero seconds. Now look at here, look, look right here, look at my pointer here. This is when Carlos is here. Then he goes to the tippy top. At five seconds, at five seconds, he's at the tippy top. At 10 seconds, he's again, even Steven with his beginning. And then somehow he goes all the way around and he's here at 20 seconds again. So here he is again at 20 seconds, right? Ms. Johnson, he's in the, he's in the same location for zero and 20? Yes, because it's a Ferris wheel. He's going around in a circle. All right, so far I've got two people in the chat that said a certain number of seconds, that is correct. And I agree with both of them. And then there's your answer. It is 15 seconds, very good. If you didn't know why it was 15 seconds, spend a little time right now and think why does it make sense for 15 seconds don't accept people's answer as like yes yes that is right it just makes sense this is one of those things and i said this before we started recording this is one of those things that it doesn't make sense it doesn't make sense and you keep pushing you keep pushing and then it clicks it makes sense so this is exactly how i graph the sine function every single time so here goes um you guys are right this is at 15 seconds and if you continue all the way around, sorry, let me do this really quick. And how high is he at 15 seconds? I forgot to ask that. How high is he at 15 seconds? Yeah, he's at five feet. If you don't know why five feet, let me explain. He's at five feet because this whole part, this whole part here, this guy here from center to ground is 30 feet. And then from here to here, the radius is 25. So 30 minus 25 is five. And then I would ask you the next question. Oh, I see it. Okay, when when else would I be at the bottom? When else would, it's not even me, it's Carlos. I'm Apparently I'm on the Ferris wheel, y'all. When else would I be on the Ferris wheel? At the bottom. So someone says 35 seconds. Again, don't believe them. The reason why I say I don't believe them is because you need to think about this on your own and make sense of it on your own. If you're just doing this exercise of believing, then it's not true. It, it, it's like, it's only true because they said it, right? It's only true because they said it, not because you, you thought it, you came up with it, you constructed it, right? All right. So yeah, th that's the sign function. I'm going to throw some curves in there and then make it a smooth curve. Please don't make it V's. It shouldn't look like mountain tops and valleys, like the way, I don't know, I draw mountains, right? It should look like a smooth curve, right? It should look like a smooth curve, okay? So my smooth curve is gonna look like this. Again, it's not gonna look pretty. I have challenges doing this. Um, so I'm gonna draw this to my best of my ability. And I'm gonna kind of draw it past 40 seconds because something happens there. And then I'm gonna bring back my Desmos guy. And actually I want him to be the full thing. So give me a second. Okay. So what I wanna do now is I wanna actually graph that function for you. It was, what was it? It was 30 plus 25, am I right? Someone make sure that I'm typing this in correctly. 18 X. Put this guy away. What do you notice? What do you notice? What do you notice? Yeah. Number one, you should notice that the green function goes through all of those black points. That's number one. Number two, someone said it's continuous. Very good. What else do you notice? I'm going to... um take a picture and then add this picture to our OneNote eventually. Let's see if I could do that. Nope. I want to do this. Uh, where can I add this picture? Probably right here. I don't know what's going to happen, y'all. Can I add pictures? Um, nope. Let's not do this now. I'll add it later. Hold on a second. Keep current selection. All right, I will add it later, but let's add um, some of our noticings to this so that we can um, do this. I'm gonna type it because I type faster on my keyboard. 
So I'm going to type your noticings um, here and they will appear. It, it might just take a second. So someone said, um, hold on a second. So someone said it's continuous. Someone said it goes through the point. I need to find my chat. Hold on. I lost it with all of the stuff. So tell me some of the noticings that you notice on that green graph. So number one, someone said it's continuous. Um, yes, there's a pattern. Very good. We call this pattern a cycle. Okay. Can you, can you take the smallest cycle? Can you look at the smallest cycle that you can possibly do and then repeat it? Can you look at the smallest cycle and repeat it? What is from what to what, right? That's what I'd like to know. Um, someone says that it looks like a heart monitor going up and down. Yeah, this looks like a heart um, monitor um, reading, I guess it would be called. Um, and it doesn't touch zero. Very good. All right. So now I need you to do some of the math stuff that you guys all see with this. Hold on. Wait. I like putting this in our font because then you guys can find it faster. All right. There you go. So, um. Can you also do the, let me write this equation out so that you guys all see this. I don't want to do that. I'm going to scoot you over. Maybe right here. Oh, it doesn't let me do that. Um, I want to write this equation out. You guys said it was um, y equals to 30 plus 25 sine 18t. Okay. Can you tell me in this graph, now you can use this one because it's a little bit simpler. This one's a very, very busy. Um, can you tell me about this graph? Do you, does anybody see the 30? Does anybody see the 30? Yeah, this is actually called a wave. Very good. This is called a sine wave. So if you've ever heard about waves before, like microwave, radio waves, um, uh, all those waves, this is how they travel. They do not travel um, straight, linearly. They travel like this, okay. Um, so does anybody see the 30? Where do you see this 30 here? So mathematicians will do this thing where they're like, huh, I wonder where this is. Because remember, I told you that your job, going back up here, is to tell me what A's job is, B's job is, and D's job is, okay? A, B, and D, okay. So back up here, where do you see 30? Where do you see 30? Where do you see 30? Okay, someone says that they see 30 at 30 seconds, good. What would what did 30 mean in the context of the Ferris wheel? What does 30 mean in the context of the Ferris wheel? Yeah, it's the height of the center off the ground. Now look at this picture. Where do you see that here? This has to do with what one of your classmates recognized, right? Yeah, it's the middle of the wave. Very good. Someone said it's the middle of the wave, Miss Johnson. Exactly. So um, people call this different things. This People call this way different things. I'm going to get rid of this guy. Um, people call this different things. Um, each of your books will call this different things. I call it the center. Books will call it the midline. Whatever you want to call it. I actually like midline better than my center. So midline. Oh, that's not, doesn't have an L, Ms. Johnson. So midline. So whenever you see that number, that's what it does. It takes a whole function and moves it up or down, depending on what it is. Everybody good? Okay. So in terms of context, that's when Carlos was at the rightmost at zero degrees or at 180. Okay. Does anybody see the 25? Does anybody see the 25? Now think about how you use 25 to build this function. 
Think about how you use 25 to build this function. Where do you see 25? lost your chat again. Yeah, we use 25 to find our, what would you call this? Yes, our top points and our what? Yeah, our top points and our bottom points. So we call 25 our amplitude. Everyone say the word amplitude, amplitude. So Miss Johnson says highest and lowest. The word amplitude means that highest and lowest. Okay. So that's going to be here, 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 here. So that's, so your amplitude, I guess I shouldn't say that. I should undo that. I don't like what I just said there. So I'm going to write your amplitude goes here. Um, let me draw a very small little guy right there. So this is my amp. You guys all see my amplitude in there? He's from midline to high and midline to low. From midline to high and midline to low. Okay, this one's the hardest one to find. So if anybody sees 18, awesome. If you don't see 18, it's okay. But does anybody see where, where 18 comes from? Does anybody see an about 18? If you don't, don't worry. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to explain it later. All right, I'm just going to leave that right there. So don't worry about 18. I'll explain his job later. So, so far, are we doing our job? Do we now know what, um, let's see, D's job is? That's the midline. Do we now understand what D's job is? Yeah? Okay. Do we now understand what A's job is, also known as the amplitude? A's job is the amplitude. Okay. All right, let's move on. So we wrote the equation already, so you guys can transfer that down there if you'd like. Um, we're just going to move on. It says, of course, the Ferris wheels do not all have the same radius, center, height, or angular speed. Angular speed is how fast it's going, okay, how fast it's going. And the reason why we call it angular is because you're not going straight in front of you, right? Like in a car, you go, <laughs> you go forward or backwards, right? Angular speed means you're traveling in a circle. Does that make sense? Okay. Describe a different Ferris wheel by changing some of the facts listed above. For example, you can change the radius of the wheel, the height of the center, the angular speed, or the amount of time it takes to complete one revolution. You can even change the direction of the rotation from counterclockwise to clockwise. If you want, you can change more than one fact. Just make sure your description seems reasonable for the motion of the Ferris wheel. Okay, so you're going to um, come up with this on your own, kind of like looking at what um, things that you want to do. Do you want it to be slower? Maybe you are building something for, you know, um, younger children. So with younger children, you have to make sure that the heights are sm shorter and that the it's moving at a slower pace. Or are you building like the one that's in London? I think it's called the eye, the London eye. And you're building a super tall, highest Ferris wheel and moving it around. Okay. So I'm going to give you a couple of seconds to just change numbers around. And then I'd like you to build it in Desmos to see if that makes sense. So you're really just plugging in the function to it. Okay. I'm going to give you not very long to do that. And then we'll come right back. So when you're making changes to the function, it changes the description of your Ferris wheel, right? So I just want to show you just really quickly how how that matters. So, oops, that's not what I wanted. Oh no, I don't know what to do here. Hold on, here. 
So, um, so I'm going to turn this guy off so you don't see him. And actually, I'm just going to get rid of him. And then here, I'm going to leave my green guy in there. And then can you share with me, like, which number did you change? Did you change 30? Did you change 25? Did you change 18? Remember the eight, if you don't remember where 18 came from, let me just remind you. The 18 came from how many degrees it took you to travel in one second, right? So some of you did 360, right? You did 360 divided by 10 because there was 10 sections. I'm typing on my computer and it's not working because that's not going to work. Divided by 10 sections. And then you took that number and you said, oh, well, if it's 36 and it's 20 seconds all the way around, then that means it's two seconds per section. So then you divided by two and then you got 18 because it was 18 seconds per no, I said it wrong. 18 degrees per second. Okay. So someone says, hey, Ms. Johnson, this is what I did. I changed 30 to 50. Okay. Before even showing you what that does. Okay. Before even showing you what that does, could someone take a guess at what change does that make? If your classmate changed the 30 to a 50, what's going to happen to my green function? So I'm going to just start typing um, 25 sine. What do you think changes? Yes, very good. The midline, the middle is going to go up. So you're talking to me in function. So now go back to the Ferris wheel. How does that affect the Ferris wheel? How does that affect your Ferris wheel? What does that mean in terms of the context of your Ferris wheel? Yes, right? The center of the Ferris wheel is taller. Okay, so then I put 18x. And it, are you guys correct? Is that what it did? Yeah, that's exactly what it did. Okay, so done. So that's what happens if you move it up. Now, what if this was for like a child, like, you know, two and three and four year olds? Would you have moved it up? Everyone's like, no, Ms. Johnson right? So let me see. So I'm going to just turn this guy off, right? What would you do for the Ferris wheel if you wanted this to be for a child? Like we're thinking two, three, four, five, six year olds. Okay. And so for those of you who are like, I love the crazy sports. I love to be really high when I was little. I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about, you know, other little humans. Very good. Okay. So change my 50 or whatever, my original function, I'm going to change my 30 to 10. Someone says, okay. Is there anything else that I should change besides that? What else would you want to happen besides, um, making the center lower? Yeah. So in this case, can you think about this really quick? If I put 25 sign, let me just keep this really quick. 18x. What does this part mean when it goes below the x-axis? What does that mean when it goes below the x-axis? Uh, don't use uh, tangent or cosine yet. Yeah, it goes to the floor. So maybe we should make the radius a little bit smaller. Am I right? Right. Okay. So in the context of the Ferris wheel, I'm so glad that you guys saw this. Everything that's below, I'll call it negative, the negative parts of our function, meaning when y is below, less than zero, it means that they went through the ground. Cave exploration. Sure. Why not? Okay. So I'm going to change my 25 maybe to, I don't know, five. Okay. You can also make it go slower right? So this 18 was 18 degrees per second. So I can make it slower. I can make it go like, I don't know, 10 degrees per second. Now look at, look at your sine function. Look at how long it takes for them to complete one section. Let me change this a little so I can get a better view here. Yeah, that's better. According to this, how long does it take 
for them to complete one revolution on there. It's a baby sine wave. You guys are so funny. How long, looking at this picture, how long does it take for them to go one revolution? Anybody see it? Mm -mm. No, one whole revolution. So for Carlos, it took him 20 seconds. Does anybody see it? So this is what I'm saying. I'm going to cut this off. Oh, how do I do this on here? Oh my gosh, I don't know how to do this. Oh, I do. Here. This is, um, let's see, zero, zero is less than or equal to X, which is less than or equal to 20. That's one complete Carlos revolution. I'm saying, what is the baby sine wave? What is his complete revolution? Do you guys all see it? Yeah, it's 30 seconds. Very good. If you don't see why that is, it's because look at where the, the baby thing starts. It's at 10, right? It goes to the highest point. It goes to the lowest point, And then it ends up back at 10. So that's what I was looking for. So whenever I say a complete cycle, that's what I'm asking. I'm asking for that thing. So let me show you again. So here is um, zero less than or equal to X, um, less than or equal to 30. See how it's a complete cycle? So now notice it's going slower so that the babies don't get sick because you know they're babies. Okay, we're gonna move on really quick. Okay, so there you you plugged in a bunch. You saw what it did. Um, that's up to you to fill out. You we, we graphed it. We're good. So we began this task by considering the graph of the height of a rider on a Ferris wheel with the radius of twenty five feet, the center of thirty feet, which makes one revolution every twenty seconds. How would the graph change if? Now this is what we were just practicing, right? What happens if the radius gets larger or smaller. That was the number that we did not play with. So where do you see the radius in this picture? Where is our radius in this picture? Uh, let's turn all these on. There you go. Where's the radius in each of these? Yeah, it's the amplitude. It's the coefficient of sine. So in the green function, it's that 25. In the purple function, still 25. Oh, we did play with it. I'm sorry, I said it. we didn't, but we did. We played with it with the baby one because we needed to make sure that the baby one was shorter, right? So what happens if the wheel is smaller? Then you see how the amplitude compares between um, the, here, let's turn off the purple the green and the black, right? Do you guys all see how the amplitude is? It's further away in the green and it's close. It's really, really close in the black one. You should be able to describe what the height of the center of the wheel is. And the last, but last but not least, we need, you were able to describe um, the wheel going faster and slower, right? So that's refer we're referring to that as the angular speed of our Ferris wheel. Okay. Okay, last but not least, let's go. Let's write this out. It says the radius of the wheel is smart. How did the equation change? Oh. So given this generic equation, remember we said our job is to figure out what D, A, and B are. Who's in charge of the radius of the wheel being smaller or larger? Who is in charge of that? And I'll type with you. Who is in charge, which letter is in charge of, um, shoot, I'm on the wrong part. Here I am. Hold on a second. Which letter is in charge of the wheel being smaller or larger? Very good. It's A. 
So here I'm just going to, oops, not there. Here I'm going to type A. And what is A called? What is A called? Yeah, A is called the amplitude. Amplitude is the radius of our Ferris wheel, right? Um, who was in charge of the height of the center? I need to change this color so it like, like actually stands out. Um, who's in charge of the, let me make this a tad bit larger. Who's in charge of the height of the center of the Ferris wheel? Who's in charge of that? Very good, it's D. Let me just copy this down. So D equals the um, height of the center. We actually call him the midline, right? Or the center, right? Last but not least, the wheel rotating faster or slower. Who was in charge of that? Yeah, it's B. So B is called our angular speed. And here's your formula. This is the one thing that I said, okay, just hold on to this because it'll make sense. Doesn't it make sense that your formula is 360 divided by um, that number? Angular speed. So if you remember, we did this before. This is what we went over. I said you guys did 360. Oops. We did 360 divided by, some of you did divided by 10, and then you divide it again by two, right? So that gave us 18 for that last example. So if you look um, at that, 10 times two is our one rotation. So that number right there is the time it took to complete one revolution. Okay. Okay. So this is going to be you practicing. I'm going to have you guys practice this um, by yourselves. But it says, write the equation of the height of the writer for each of the following T seconds. The radius is 30 feet. The center is 40 feet above ground. And the angular speed is 15 degrees per second counterclockwise. So they gave you all of these numbers here. Let's highlight them. They gave you 45, 30, and 15. Now that you know how to do this, you should be able to write me a function that looks like this based on this information. Okay. So um, on the next time that we be back, we will check to see if your answer is correct. Um, let me actually pause it here and you guys try that. Okay, so just a little bit more on angular speed. So if we if we think about 360, 360 what? This would be degrees, right? So I'm going to put the little degree symbol there. And then 10 times 20 is the seconds, right? These are seconds here. So 18 what? 18 degrees per second. So just like... Um, like how fast you go in a car or how, you know, the speed of something else, we usually measure it in miles per hour. But because this is angular speed, it means I'm measuring it in angles per time, right? And so what is angles measured in? Degrees. So that's why it's degrees per second, okay? So that's where that 18 came from in our original one, because I think there was some confusion on that. So to do this one, it says, write the equation of the height of the writer, blah, blah, blah. And it's radius is 30 feet. It's height above ground is 45 feet. Um, the angular speed is 15 degrees per second. So the very first thing that I'm going to do is all of these are plug inable. I don't know how else to say that. All of these are plug inable. I'm going to take D. I'm going to plug it in. I'm going to take A. I'm going to plug it in. B is not plug inable. You need to calculate B. So the way we calculate B, and I'm going to start with B first, is I take B and I say that's 360 divided by angular speed. So really that's 360 divided by 15 seconds in this case. 
in this case, it says it takes, um, oh wait, just kidding. They gave us, and they gave it to us. I'm sorry, just kidding. I'm erasing. I thought they gave us 15 seconds, but they actually gave it to us as usable information. So I thought they gave us how long it took them to go around one time, but that's not correct. It's 15 degrees per second. So this is actually the, like, this is our 18 from before, if that makes sense. So using this, you can actually figure out how long it takes them to go all the way around the circle using this equation up here, right? Okay. So with that being said, now I can, everything, I was wrong. Everything is plug-inable because I now know how to read. So I'm going to say the height of the, the writer, and I'll use H of T just because that's what they used, is equal to, and I like to put D all the way out in front because that's where, um, sometimes there's some confusion with calculators depending on which calculator you're using. So I always like to put D all the way out in front. So in this case, D is which one? 30, 45, or 15? 30, 45, or 15. Yeah, it's 45. Good job. Oops, I don't know how to write 45. So this is going to be 45 plus. And then I need, I should, I guess I should show you this at the same time. And then I'm going to need A. Who is A in this case? The amplitude. Who is A in this case? Yeah, it's um, 30. Because it says the radius of the wheel is 30 feet. So imagine 30 going like he's, 30 feet higher than the center and he's 30 feet under the center. So then we write 30 sine, right? And then here we're just going to write um, something T, right? In this case, it's our 15. Say so we didn't have to do any calculations on this one because they gave it to us straight off, right? Okay, so there's our equation. Um, you can actually figure out how long it takes him to go all the way around. Let's see. I think it's 360 divided by 15. Ooh, I don't know that. Let's see. It's two and then four. It's 24 seconds. I think it's 24. 20, that doesn't make sense. Does that make sense? I don't know. Let's do math really quick. So let's see. 360 divided by 15. Yeah, it's 24. Okay, so I just want to graph this really quick, just so that we can, like, you can compare these two. Um, so I can't see my graph. So let's see, it says 45 plus 30 sine 15x. So there it is. And if you kind of look at halfway in between, yeah, that looks like 24, 25 seconds. Not sure which one it is. Yeah, it can't be 25 seconds. Because the halfway in between there would be 20. Yeah, that doesn't work. Yeah, so it would be 24 seconds, just like we calculated. So there is how you do that. Um, let me pause this really quick. I'm going to have you guys look at the next one, which says the radius of the wheel is 50. The center of the wheel is at ground level. You spend half of the time underground. You guys figured that out. That was really cool that you guys said that. And the wheel makes one revolution every 15 seconds. So in this case here, they did not give you um, your angular speed. You have to actually calculate it. So be very aware of that. And then it looks like they only gave you two numbers. So now you're like, okay, well, where's my third number? They actually gave it to you. So just be careful as you look at that. Okay, so now that we're back, um, I'm going to again, plug this in. I like writing my generic equation in here. So H of T equals to D plus A sine um, of BT. So that way I know where to plug everybody in. D is the movement up and down. If you remember that, it's where the center of the Ferris wheel is. And that was the number they quote unquote did not give you, right? But if you look, it says ground level, right? It's at ground level. So that means zero. So Ms. Johnson, D is zero. Yeah. So D equals zero. So you're like, okay, that kind of makes sense. 
So like, yeah, like you guys talked about it earlier was like, oh, cave explorations. Exactly. So if part of the time they're underneath the ground, I don't know, it'd be cool if it was part of it was like underneath water, but like you guys had masks on, so you wouldn't drown or anything like that. You know what I mean? I know that was way too much information. You're welcome. All right. So then I say, okay, well, where does this 50 go? And the 50 goes here for our amplitude, right? And this last guy, 15 seconds kind of goes in as B, but we need to like calculate him first. So um, B is going to be equal to 360 divided by that 15 seconds, which is, let's see, I think we said this is 24. We just figured this out before. So now this is 24. So this is, yeah. So that means it's going 24 degrees per second. So that's going to be where my B goes. That's my B now. So this guy here is my B. So that is my helper to find B, but it is not my B, if that makes sense. So then I'm just going to plug everybody in and then I'm done. So H of T equals to something plus sine of something T. And then I'm just going to go in and plug in my numbers. I got yellow guy here. And then I got the pink guy here. And then I got the green guy here. And then I go in and I plug everybody in. Let's see. Um, D is zero. Ms. Johnson, do you have to put the zero there? No, you don't have to. But I like to put them in there as a placeholder. I put 50 there because that's my radius. And I put 24 here. And there you go. There's my answer. So um, if you are really trying to get to the next level in terms of understanding this, your brain should start graphing this in, in your head. It doesn't have to be perfect, but it has to be something along the lines of this. So I think that my graph goes above the x-axis and below. I know that it goes up 50 and down 50 from my midline, which in this case, my midline zero. So it goes all the way up to 50 and all the way to negative 50 right? And that 24 is interesting because that's the helper to help me figure out how long it takes me to go all the way around, right? So 15 seconds is the amount of time it takes to do one revolution. Time for one, and I'm going to call it full cycle now. And I couldn't spell it. So there you go. So it takes 15 seconds. So if you look at where the, um, where the sine curve kind of cycles through, it'll cycle through every 15 seconds, right? It'll cycle through every 15 seconds. Okay. So hope that makes sense. Have a great day.